Hey, welcome to Mario Details. I'm Nick. And I'm James. And we are two industrial designers in the big city sweating the small stuff. Ah. <laughs> well, James, it's been a while. We haven't done a done a you and me pod for a while. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to be rusty at this. How, how you been? What's, what have you been up to? Mm, working. Working? That's pretty much it. Just, just work. And, you know, there's the whole fuss around the holidays oh right the fuss you know. around the holidays got yeah. a lot gotta get those christmas presents for your mom your dad oh you know. my gosh i just i just went on an amazon rampage the other night <laughs> and just got it all done in like an hour that's good that's efficient yeah efficiency it's key especially when when the uh the window of delivery is dwindling you know <laughs> gotta get those prime yeah. Two day deliveries. You'll put something in the cart and it's like estimated arrival time is January third. You're like, uh oh, remove. <laughs> no. <laughs> you gotta choose a different Well, thing. I guess that wasn't the right gift for that person. Right, right, right. Um, but what about yourself, Nick? Yeah, I I've been all right. I uh I don't know if you saw or not, but I took a, a week off from the gram. Mm-hmm. Um was just going through some personal things. I actually was going through a breakup, uh, so it's always a little tough. But uh you know, I just needed some time to reflect and uh yeah, I, I'm glad to be back on the pod though with you, James. Doing our this oh. is this is our Christmas special. This is our Christmas special. This is the season finale. Yeah, the season fa 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 <laughs> finale. I wish I we should have gotten like Santa hats or something to wear, and like had a little fireplace. Oh. Actually, I could just turn on fireplace YouTube and like turn it around yeah. to the camera. I guess. Well, we, hang on. Do you hear that? Do you hear that crackle? Crackle at the fireplace. Oh, I can to, feel it now. I'm about to edit that and post. Oh my god, it's under my chair. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah. I. I. Uh. I think we just like kind of hang out this episode. Uh. We want to talk about the survey results. Yeah. Oh, and uh, another update. We went to see the new MakerBot. Yes, we did. Uh. We uh, that was, and Reed was there too. Um. We went up to their headquarters and MakerBot released a new, like it's it's beyond the hobby level of 3d printer but below the i don't know industry level yeah well it's, i mean it's interesting they were bought out by stratasys so this is this is using using some of the stratasys patents um in order to make something that yeah like is not for the corporation right. necessarily um that's where a stratasys printer would come you know come into play but right. this is this is for it's like the mid level, the big yeah. dongs. But it's it's pretty impressive what it can produce. Yeah, it has a full. The thing that I liked was it was fully enclosed mm-hmm. and it was a heated, uh, heated chamber, which right. was interesting. I've always seen heated build plates. Yeah, but heated chamber I think might be something that Stratasys owns. That, but that's the only other place I've seen it is in the the big you know, commercial 3D printers. Yeah. So it's interesting to see it in kind of a desktop size. Yeah. And it's, I think it's actually from what I've, you know, cause we've only really seen it. I I think it's actually has a smaller footprint than the replicator plus it's taller, but it's taller. I think the, the footprint footprint the is width, smaller. Yeah. The build area is almost the same. I think it's a little bit smaller than the one we have. Yeah. Um, dual, dual extrusion. Yes. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, we're working with MakerBot. We might do some sort of collaboration with them again, yeah. like we have in the past. So, uh, you know, we're excited to get our hands on the printer. Um, yeah. ho- hopefully we get to test it out and give you guys some feedback on how it works and stuff. Yeah. Did you mention the water soluble support? Did I? I don't think so. Yeah. So it's dual extrusion. Uh, so you can add water soluble support Yeah. or you could do multicolor, I think. Mm-hmm. I think maybe I don't know if <laughs> we we're not professionals yet on this. <laughs> it was cool. They they ran us through their little uh, exhibition they set up. Yeah, we felt we felt important. Yes, thank I felt, you. I felt important. They they brought out croissants for us. Yes, they did. Yes, thank you, thank you very much to MakerBot for bringing us in. It yeah. was pretty exciting to yeah. see. I mean, it's a gorgeous printer for one. I, you know, those times where you're like. Well, that rendering is not going to look as good in person. <laughs> I I would say that that printer is render level quality good. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they took they took some care to make that as nice as it is. So I'm impressed. Yeah, it looks sweet. It looks badass. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm excited to test it out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then you guys were astounding in providing us with feedback for our survey. Man, I could not believe how many people did that survey. We, I've never seen those numbers before. 300 people. Yes. That means that, that means that not only, I mean, 300 people doing the survey yeah. is like, a fraction of the listeners right we don't really have good guys we don't have good metrics at all <laughs> if you could just let us know if you listen or not just you know call us uh send us an email oh, just say i listen we're just gonna get a ton of I, spam now. yeah well um the thing is is like you know this was not an instagram survey this was not an a or b like this was a Google survey. Right. This, this was this wasn't a finger tap question, right? This yeah. was a, a, a very uh, involved In, survey. Absolutely. So that is even more impressive to me that yeah. people would take the time, and we're honored that you would take the time to fill out the survey. Yeah, thank you guys. It was great feedback and gave us so many ideas, and we just want to like take some time to like just just talk about what we learned. I mean, yeah, the the first you know, part of the survey was all like quantitative data. Um, we learned like half of our listeners are ID students. Yep. Uh, and 20, about 20% are ID professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have some other professionals, design professionals, other design students as well. Yeah. Uh, probably bleeding into graphic design and uh, some other industries, I'm sure. And then we have a, a 2%, which is my mom and your mom. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, and then we also had the one question what was where it was like rate the favorite part of the podcast. Mm. Cuz we usually start off with the weekly updates, we do some design news occasionally. You got the topic in the center. Yeah. Kind of center end and we have our shout out and we also do the interviews and everyone loves the interviews. 100%. Oh yeah. You guys are all about those interviews and you also like the main topic, which is nice as well. I I yeah. I, that I was a little bit worried about. I was like, okay, can people tolerate us right. talking about one topic right. for, you know, we talk about it usually for 20 minutes or so. Yeah. And we, you know, we're just, just, all right, we're just opinionated. We don't know. We're not professional. <laughs> I, I guess we're technically professionals. Isn't t- the term professional mean that you get paid? Yeah. We're okay. professional. We're technically professional. We're, te- we're not professional podcasters though. No, we are not professional podcasters. But, but we are professional industrial designers. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's awesome that you guys like the main topic. The The ones that were the least favorite was the shout out of the week and our weekly updates. But I think that's okay. I mean, that, that was, shocks me. Why Why do people not like a shout James, out? James, they don't. It's like, do the people not, that have never been shouted out? That's the problem. They, they don't like the shout out. Right, because they've never been shouted out. Um, and all the people that did like the shout out had been shouted out. Yeah. I think, you know, we we have a we have a sort of platform here and I want I want to promote work that I think is interesting and cool and, you know, uh, like um there is so much out there and for us to curate that for you a little bit. Um there's an interview coming up with Derek Cassio where he talks about the role of a teacher being sort of a curator. Mm. And I think like I want I want people in the community to curate for me to show me like, hey, this is something that really inspires me. That yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna continue to do that. Well, yeah, and and you know, to be clear, like this feedback is great, and it's great to, to be ha- clear. It's meaningless. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it, no, it, it has its place. No, it has I'm kidding. Its, <laughs> I'm kidding. It does have its place as a as purely research, and you know, it's good to be informed, but just like. Just like even the design process, yeah, it's it's good to understand the research, but it's also good to understand when you can break the research. Mm-hmm. You know, um, right? But yeah, I you know, it it wasn't that people hated the shoutouts or hated the <laughs> weekly updates. It was just that it was like the least favorite, right? Um, That's although, fair. Although I didn't put a hate option on the survey, so oh. I kind of skewed the results. But anyways, anyways, uh, what else do we have? Um, Oh, we 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 asked how would people like to support us, and we had about 120 people said that they would buy merch, mm. which is quite a surprising yeah. amount of people. Um, yeah, and so I'm excited for that. I know we would like to do merch, and James and I are working on it. 
you know, season two is coming up next year. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is that by supporting us, even in a small way, I mean, there there is there is time that we have to dedicate to to putting together the podcast, putting together the video, like the audio. And so just like having that little bit of cushion yeah. to like if I take out time of the day where I might normally be working on client work right. and say like oh well we have we have this support for the podcast and like i can justify spending all this time because i want like i want our content to be great right i want to make great videos and everything for you guys so we really appreciate that you guys would support us in that way yeah and i've bought i think uh, i think we're on the 15th mic for you james you've blown out the (laughs) the last 14 talking so loud No, but uh, yeah, we definitely appreciate that support. That's awesome to hear. And, you know, even if you guys just listen and share and like, that's enough support as well. We right. really appreciate that too. Yeah. Um, okay. So that was like the quantitative part. That was like the numbers part. Right. And then we left open the the portion for you guys to just enter whatever you want. Yeah. Um, this is it. So we just had, we, uh, I was just like pulling out a few things that I liked. Uh, th- this was like... I think the, t- the title was, do you have any other feedback? Um, so the first thing I pulled out was a joke of the week. Mm. James, do you have a joke of the week? We should think of a joke of the week. Oh, my God. Um, why did uh, Ross Lovegrove cross the road? Uh, there was a tree on the other side. <laughs> no, because the thought came to him organically. Uh. Uh, I, no, that's, that's <laughs> terrible. That's we'll, terrible. We'll have to work on this one. <laughs> Um, uh, a lot of people also asked about, could we look into different countries design philosophy? Yeah. Which I thought that was interesting. We had like several comments about like, Hey, we'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, Middle Eastern design or, you know, European design and how that is integrated into the design community. Um, I right. think, you know, definitely, you know, European design and American design are certainly represented. Right. I think what's not represented is, you know, your South America, um, Asia, you know, Middle East, and, and those areas have that budding design culture that is, I don't know, it's definitely worth thinking about. I, right. I'm not a professional in those areas. No. But. And that's the thing is, is uh, you know, we're, we're talking about things that we're more intimate with, so those kind of areas that we don't have as much knowledge. I mean, if you guys uh, in the international community could send us emails of, you know, like check out this designer, this is, this is a prominent designer in my country or yeah. um, I would love to see that kind of stuff. I've seen some cool designers come out of Mexico. Yeah. Um, There's some cool design studios down in Mexico. Yeah. And, and and all around too. Right. Oh, Japan, obviously. Yes. They got a strong design. Yeah, culture. I feel like we've talked about Japan. Yeah. But yeah. I, we also, hey, we need to like, I mean, New York's a big place. I'm sure that we can find a designer here that's has a different cultural influence that right. they can speak to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that was that was a good insight mm-hmm. that we could look into. Uh, another thing, which was kind of cool, is they wanted quarterly or or contests or something. Someone hmm. mentioned like doing challenges, like a minor details challenge. Oh, we actually, I don't know. Did you see the, uh, oh, shoot, I forgot his name. He did a project inspired by minor details podcast. Right. There was a, Oh man, we got to look him up now. Wasn't it, was it some sort of like phone lock or, or it was somewhere to put your phone? Yeah. So I believe, Oh, and, and I'll have to find, find this person's name but it was like they took one of our episodes where i believe we talked about um a a phone addiction Mm. and created a product that essentially encapsulates your phone in kind of like a gel but it looked nice Mm -hmm. Uh, and you kind of like charged it it was kind of like a home but it had a lid on it so you couldn't use it when you're in bed or something like that. Gel or jail? Jail. Did I say gel? I thought jail. you said... <laughs> There's my southern accent. Oh, yeah. Put it in jail. All right. 
<laughs> hey, come on, James. Born North, born right in North Carolina. <laughs> um, well, how not, are you gonna find that, Nick? I, I have no clue. I think this is uh, is this is your mini contest. See if Nick can find find this project. Maybe maybe you you talk about the next feedback and then I'll try to. Yeah, this. I mean, uh, so let's see. This the next piece of feedback uh, or suggestion is. Uh, bring in a friendly client and discuss what they think about good good design, about what is a, makes a good designer and good design. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wouldn't. I don't think the unfriendly unfriendly client would even accept the invitation. Yeah, definitely not. Um, but this is something that we've definitely been thinking about for season two: is bringing in people like engineers or graphic designers, packaging designers. Um, yeah, even clients. I, I think it would be it would be interesting to open up that dialogue between disciplines and and espe- like especially I'm interested in disciplines outside of design and how they perceive design and what what both sides could maybe do. Like let's have like a Camp David moment where we come together and we figure out like how do we refine this relationship, this working relationship, so that everybody not, is not necessarily happy, but they're they're not unhappy with with the relationship? Are you thinking like like what kind of industries though? Are you thinking like marketing or I mean, I mean in, engineering is definitely one that is the obvious answer. We'll right. get some engineers here in here, talk to them about how they think mm-hmm. designers should (laughs) why they hate designers you know i mean i think you know as designers were trained in uh in empathy and so i think we should definitely be empathizing with the people within the organizations that we're working with you know as they're not just blockades to our progress right you know and uh and maybe we can open up some sort of dialogue that would ease that tension perhaps i i think i think it could be pretty interesting and uh and yeah like find out what an engineer thinks is a good designer <laughs> you know a, a designer but, that always puts draft but on. here's the thing it's like you're not going to find one engineer that represents all engineers because i've certainly worked with different types of engineers that's true that's um true. so uh yeah there's uh there's okay, that. I found the, found oh, the guy. Oh, God, finally. <laughs> that was a long... I appreciate oh, you stalling for that long. That man. was really impressive, James. Ooh. All right. Um, it, his name is Oliver Sinclair. Mm-hmm. And uh, they are a design student in... Oliver. Or her intern? Intern? Uh, but yeah, shout out to Oliver because that project was interesting and oh it was called night n-i-t-e mm. um like nick at night yeah maybe uh or late night nick and check them out on instagram at o dot s design nice but can, can let's continue on <laughs> this, this well you know we're just like well, we didn't even pod. talk about what the possibility of a mini contest or challenge would be oh right with minor details in mind that would be fun to, yeah. to, to do some sort of like, you know, because Creative Session does their little design challenges every right. thing, every other. I th- yeah, and and I think that there's like, there's this element of the feedback, like, you know, uh, reviewing some of the work and giving feedback. Oh, yeah. We, and, could, we could kind of like somehow present or describe the work and... Or we could this. have people, I mean, this would be quite a production, but have people send in like video entries explaining their <laughs> project and then we can talk about it. That'd be cool. You know, I could take that. That would be pretty cool. Multimedia. Um, oh, yeah. See. And that was like, that was part of the suggestion too. Is oh, that, yeah. Uh, the, next, the next suggestion I wrote down was that people or someone said, how how about taking recordings from your listeners and and answering them during the podcast? Yeah, and you guys are looking for more interactivity, and especially I know there's also a few comments that were like, "Yeah, I I'm screaming right now because I want to tell you guys that you're wrong, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't because it's a podcast." Oh man. Um, but yeah, we we do want to 
figure out some sort of more interactive way to uh to i don't know talk with you guys right i i think we should push our instagram page and the chat area of the post yeah to be more of a discussion forum i it's not really a good area to do it but i feel like that's the best access yeah. there's that there's the youtube comments you, youtube comments it's keep it a, clean <laughs> keep it clean guys it's, it's youtube though it's yeah it's gonna, it's gonna get muddy yeah um and then we also we should announce that we uh added a google voice number yes to our account now do you have that number on hand i do i've memorized it i try to pick one that was like easy to remember it's 646-494-4011 wow yeah and you know we're in u.s so put a one in front of it yeah uh but it's google voice so we're not gonna pick up the phone don't be shy just call it let it ring and then leave us a voicemail and we can play it on the podcast didn't we get one voicemail uh i think we did let me just See if I can find it. I, like, we got this one voicemail, and I, like, thank you for calling. Uh, I, I would love for this to get more interactive as uh, as we go along, get more. Oh, yeah. Here more. we go. Oh. Uh, this one comes from Skeeter. Skeeter, what up? Hey, man. This is Skeeter. I just want to say I really love the podcast. I mean, I love that time where... Like, James was like, what? Dick was like, oh, my God. And they talked about Apple and stuff. Yeah. I mean, good times. All right. I'll see you later. <laughs> Man. That was so nice of you, that, Skeeter. That was great. That All was right. really from the heart, you know? That was, I can't handle it. <laughs> that was James. Oh, uh, come on, Nick. James. James. Gosh. We were testing out the voicemail last yeah. night, and James called it to test it out. I have multiple personality it was, disorder. It was hilarious. Um, oh, but anyway, uh, Skeeter lives in my heart and in my mind. So yeah, send, send, your, send in your voicemails, even if they're like Skeeter. We love them. Yeah. We love them all. Yeah, absolutely. I would, yeah, I would love to, because there is a disconnect with the... With the Getting the emails, there's this disconnect of inflection and all of that, and right. it's just great to like to get uh, start a bigger like we want to like really start a bigger conversation. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And I I am happy to hear, especially when I like visit schools and things that the students are like sitting in the workshop talking about the podcast. Right. And even at like design studios, I know like Reed doesn't he always talk about the podcast with his coworkers? I hope so. Or someone was telling me that they do, but <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think I mean one day it would be cool if we could actually take calls, but uh, that that we'll we'll have to save that for another day. We for, could we for, could we could do one of those like twenty four hour callathons. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Put on some put on some really cheap suits and just uh, yeah, get some donations. Yeah, yeah, but. Um, yeah, and so yeah, the last suggestion is just more interactivity between you guys and the viewers. Yeah, so and let us we know. want that. Yeah, let us know if you guys have any other ideas. Also, but. if you want, bring us out to your school and we'll do a live podcast. That's a great idea. Come on, that's a good one too. Absolutely, I would love to do that. We yeah, we're in the we're actually in the talks with the school right now, so we might uh, a, a duo. James and I are going to come out to a school. Maybe. Yeah. Well, we're still, got, still got to iron out details, but yeah. we, should, we should propose a live pod as well. I think anywhere we go together, <laughs> we should do a live pod. Even in the bathroom. We go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> we always, why do we always go to the bathroom together, Nick? <laughs> um, let's see. What are some other... Uh, oh, uh, oh, someone... This is so sad. They said, I'll forever regret missing your classes at Square One. Oh. Well, don't worry. I'm sure that, like, we'll, we'll be around. Cause well, check your email because you've got a one-way ticket <laughs> to New York City. <laughs> one way. Yeah. They have to come and stay. Here. Well, we're not going to pay for a round trip. Come on. It's <laughs> a lot of money. I can't even pay for one way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and then, oh, and here, here's another comment, James. Uh, someone said that Nick has the best voice, list, voice to listen to. Uh, what is it the screaming yes james is it all the screaming (laughs) 
Um, you send that money and I'll get some vocal cord surgery. <laughs> no, we, we have been trying to improve the quality because for a long time we were recording on two laptops and then like syncing the audio. But now we've set up one laptop. We're working on it, guys. We're working on the quality. Uh, so yeah. so we're, we heard your feedback on that. And yes. Working on it. Okay. Now to my favorite portion of this, What's your which favorite? is pseudo celebrities read mean comments <laughs> well <laughs> they're not mean <laughs> this was what was the suggestion it was like well what do you don't like it was what do you don't like yeah. about the podcast yeah <laughs> what, um, do, are there mean comments in here read it to me james uh let me take a sip first okay mm. when one of you sounds more sober than the other come on <laughs> I wonder who they're talking about though. Like who's the more sober one? I do you think it changes from episode to episode? I think it I has. think it depends I, on yeah, how much it's... we eat before we record. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um at, we got a lot of shout out to Kiyoshi the Kid because we got a lot of compliments on that music. Yeah, you guys love the intro and outro. Yeah. And the you know, at first it's always takes a little time to get used to. Like our story from Square One where the, the girl was like Oh no! I don't like this music. Hey, <laughs> hey, Mikey, can you make a song? And Mikey's like, "Yeah, I, that that's my song." <laughs> Mikey, I think it's an awesome song. Yeah, I jam out to it every time I'm editing the podcast, and I get to the end of the edit, I play the, you know, the exit music. Yeah. I'm just... Also, also, let's give another shout out to the full length version of the song. If, right. If you guys like really enjoy it, Mikey has put together like an extended version, uncut on his soundcloud um again that's kiyoshi the kid you can find it in the yeah. the, the website and everything. i would just love to hear someday some couple say you know the first time that i got up the courage to ask my future significant other to dance was when the minor details theme came on that would be beautiful that'd be beautiful i i i'll keep dreaming um another critique the thumbnail picture has Nick on the left and James on the right, yet Nick sits on the right and James sits on the left. Not something I hate, just triggers my OCD. <laughs> that, that's on the YouTube, because the YouTube thumbnail is like that, right? Yes, it is like that. I mean, I guess it's a pretty easy change to make. Are you ready, Nick? Oh, we're switching seats? No, our, our levels are definitely going to be oh. off. Oh, <laughs> Well, we'll do it another time. <laughs> or I can just change the thumbnail. I don't know. Um, that's a funny one. Um, what else we got? Oh, uh, well, somebody doesn't like it when I make you feel bad about being the less favorite. <laughs> we also, I, I, I kind of wanted to put in that question into the survey of who is the better host. <laughs> but James said, no, Nick, that'll be the end. <laughs> One of us is going to go home crying. Yeah. And I know it'll be me. <laughs> no, James. Come no, on. No, I think people like you better. No. Yeah. I think you're nicer than me. I'm nicer? Yeah, I'm mean. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, But uh, let's see. Oh, gosh. Well, this one is just a twist of the dagger. <laughs> it might just be because i noticed i've noticed it in myself recently well at least you know you uh, recognize it in yourself but jane says like a lot like when <laughs> like do i ever like i like uh like i i don't know what i like, like saying i also find myself saying like and also i find myself saying uh you know oh yeah you know is a big one it's it is it is funny when I go back and edit, and I'm sure you do the same thing. You hear yourself, yes, and you're like, oh, why, no, Nick, don't, James, why are you saying, oh, you know, <laughs> like you know, yeah. I don't know, you know, right, like right. you know, uh, but no, that is something that I've been working on recently. Is just a lot of this podcast is getting more comfortable talking. And having these conversations in a way that is clear and concise. It's a skill. It is it is absolutely a skill. Mm -hmm. And so I'm working on it, you know, like, you know, <laughs> just give me like a break. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, oh, man. This one. Okay. This one says, when Nick finishes off the wine and James gets bummed, need more wine management, guys. <laughs> happy James, happy life. It's true. It's true. 
James, you need some more wine. I'll give you more wine. <laughs> I, I, I do tend to drink faster than you. There was, there, yeah, there was one case in particular, one episode in particular, where I just watched, like, I don't, I feel like I was still on the first glass. It, it felt like I had hardly had anything, and it was just drip, drip, drip. But anyway, um, you know, uh, the quality is really during that, like when great products are solidified is during that production phase. And you have to have like a really great quality team. Did you just finish the wine? Sorry, James. Here, here. I, unbelievable. No, we're not sharing wine. Yeah. Done. I am sorry, James. I, but I, you know, I called you out for it. And since then, I, I think James has been happy. Yeah, we've been happy, James. I've been trying to split it very evenly now. Yes. Uh, here's another one. When James says, ooh, after the tagline. Oh, right, right. When, when, when I'm like, we're uh, sweating the small stuff. Sm- and you're like, oh, yeah. Shout out to Graham Wilson one more time for giving us that awesome intro. Yeah. But he did not put into his suggestion that i should say ooh afterwards so that was a little improv right not it's not always going to uh gonna stick i think this that this this comment is when you take uh your your executive liberties and decide to just say ooh whenever you want james (laughs) Ooh. (laughs) okay that's enough oh oh this one this one's about me. We have a. Uh, can Nick's background sketches get some more marker on them? What? This is on the YouTube. If you guys watch the YouTube, it's like I'm living in a Charlie Chaplin film <laughs> it's, over it's here. It's black and white. It's all pen. Yeah. I'm just not a marker guy. Nick, do you know who Charlie Chaplin is? Uh, he's a movie guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He got that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's the OG movie guy. And uh, the last comment. What's the last comment, James? Uh, the uh, the wine pouring noises. The wine pour- what? The, people don't like the wine pouring noises. No, people don't like. <laughs> people don't like the wine pouring noises. <laughs> Listen, if we're gonna drink wine, I mean, what do you want? You want us to get camelbacks full of wine, <laughs> sipping up through plastic straws? <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Uh, I guess we could do that too. Oh, so I think that was it for all the the comments and again thank you guys i know we just we were kind of making a lot of jokes there but all all the feedback was actually really helpful and yeah there, there are some really good constructive criticisms in there that you know we are working on and you know slowly but surely gets a little better every time yeah um but it's time for the moment everyone's been waiting for oh! it's, time for, it's time for the uh uh ben Mir, uh oh, man. contest i'm going so to pull exciting. up a random number generator, and you know we had 300 contestants here. I'm going to generate number. Here we go. We're clicking it. Two, 288. Number 288. Wow. Now not everyone entered, so hopefully there's someone here. Let's see. 288. 288. 288. Uh, yes. Their email. I won't say the whole email, but their email starts with L O G R. Log R. Congratulations, Log Congratulations, R. Congratulations, Log R. Uh, we'll send you an email and we'll coordinate how to get that to you. But uh, Congratulations. I wish we had like, we, we need like <laughs> confetti to fall from the you can, ceiling. I'm sure you can put that in a post, in post, right? On, I, the, on the YouTube? I will. One, once I learn how to, how to do After Effects. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks everyone still for contributing to the survey and, uh, uh yeah let's see what else we got what's up next on our schedule here james well oh, it's I, it's time for a recap Nick. yeah let's let's talk about this is the year we started the podcast season one and we you are guys are og listeners yes think about this 10 years from now <laughs> we're when we're on season 10 our thousandth episode you're gonna be like you know i was there from the beginning yeah and everyone's like hey you listen to this new podcast called minor details and you're like oh yeah i've been listening for that for 10 years yeah 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 and i still hate the wine pouring <laughs> noises uh um, but uh yeah so 
let's do a little recap. We've had, what, 35, 36 episodes? Uh, yes. This will be our 37th. Yeah. And so, do you, Nick, do you have a favorite episode or episodes? Yeah. I, I mean, I think my favorite episode is our freelance episode. Because mm. that was the one episode that like I was like itching to do all year, and we kind of had to like make sure we had all our ducks in a row for that one. And uh, I felt like that one was it was just like really solid information, and I, I hope that that was really helpful and eye opening to a lot of you who are interested in freelance and how we you know make a living doing it. Yeah. So that was one of my favorites. I don't know. Did you have a favorite? I think. Uh... I think I really liked the portfolio episode just because you got so fired up. I've never seen that was a good episode such too. fire in young Nick Baker's eyes as when he discussed what he hates about portfolios. Because, uh, you know, the whole B hands. I would love to see you a, a portfolio review. Just like flip a table. <laughs> All right. here. I, okay. Here, okay. You're already getting me wild up because <laughs> I'm already Don't wild out. I'm already a. Uh, reminiscing on okay let me just say one thing one thing uh whenever you do a portfolio review Mm -hmm. students listening right you're going and it's like an in-person review right you're like you're going and you're meeting your professor you're meeting some designer you're meeting someone to review your portfolio and this happens this has happened to me before and you sit down and you know whoever they're whoever it is is starting to flip through your portfolio and give you feedback and you just say okay okay yeah that's good that's good and then you walk away. Like, what? You didn't write anything down? Are my words lost oh, to you? Oh, interesting. When people don't take notes during portfolio reviews, it makes me so... Angry. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm like, hey, do you need a piece of paper or a pen? We're sitting here reviewing your portfolio. You aren't going to remember all this right. stuff. Right. Uh, you know... Sorry. <laughs> you, this is why you like that episode. Yeah. Because I just got so... Yeah, you like, got so fired up. Yeah. There, there was this thing that happened to me during a portfolio review once. It was my senior year, and I was talking... Um, to this guy who was a graduate of the program and was like a really awesome designer. And he has, I believe he still has his own um, firm. Uh, he does a lot of design research. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking him up really quick. Yeah, Brandon Brandon Craft. Um, and he founded this, this uh, design research firm uh, called ClinView. Uh, they do a lot of medical design. Oh, okay. And uh, I was very nervous to talk to him because he was, he like spoke at my graduation. Like yeah. he, he was a very like prominent alumni. And, and if, when you're a student too, you're kind of like afraid to talk to a, a yeah. real designer anyways. Yeah. So I was in the midst of talking to Brandon and, and if you're watching the video, the, the area that we were having the portfolio review there, like at Virginia Tech, Kogel Hall, there's this lobby area where there's all these wooden slats okay. up on the wall. Okay. And it's like rows and rows and rows. It's like the entire lobby area. And it's for pinning up. It's for like putting, you know. Okay. Mm-hmm. And at some point, it was like my last portfolio review of the day. And I was looking at Brandon and I, like also the slats behind him. And, and my depth perception was like, it was like a psychedelic experience. <laughs> like suddenly everything was on the same plane. Right. Or, like you kind of like gaze out a little bit. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I completely, I like paused for what felt like a, like 10 minutes. It felt like such a long time. I I was in the middle of like my third project going through it. I just like, <laughs> I don't know what happened to me. Oh, but. Man. You know, he uh, it didn't seem to phase him, luckily, and and he gave me some really awesome feedback for my portfolio, and and he's still like, you know, to this day, it, like a lot of his advice is sort of imprinted into my mind, and uh, but yeah, it was just like a very odd off moment for me. Um, but are there are there any moments, any specific moments from the podcast from the past year that you look back on and? like that stand out in your mind um oh well this wasn't in, in the pot this is in major details okay where someone asked if the strap chair could really hold you guys and both of us went over to the strap chair and jumped on it <laughs> in my bedroom 
Nice. That was that was a major details. Yeah. Um there's was there a moment for you yes okay there's a moment when we were interviewing paul sohi and uh and he was in the middle of of talking about i don't know if he at the that moment he was talking about mannequin genitalia or not (laughs) right go back and listen to that one um but but you had a mic in front of you and you snaked around the mic (laughs) grabbed the wine bottle Poured out wine for yourself, snaked around to pour out wine for me, and then snaked around to pour out wine for Paul, and then snaked back out, put the wine bottle down. I remember that. I remember and, that. And it was so, I was like amazed at the stealth and also kind of distracted and like lost <laughs> Paul in the shuffle. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have no follow up question because I've been so distracted. By this display, I was well. It's because I sat, I sit farther back when we did the yeah. interviews, so it, it was hard for me to reach. But I like really stretched, yeah, and like was. It yeah. was it was like a serpent, yeah, but yeah. um, but then Nick sits back down and like carries on the conversation as if nothing <laughs> happened. It was amazing. Listen, but I but in in regards to the interviews, I'll, I'll also have to say that like. I think that every interview we've done so far has illuminated like something really interesting that like you wouldn't you wouldn't get from anybody unless you sit them down for a conversation. Yeah. You know, whether it be like finding out that Knack Studios is a collection of designers all across right. America. Right, right, right. Or like the Michael DeTullo, like you know, his Michael Jordan. Oh, that's such a good story. Story yeah, yeah. is amazing. Paul Sohi and Mannequins with Genitalia. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Read the mindfulness conversation. We got a lot of feedback about that and we so appreciate it. Like, you know, people it 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 had an impact on people that we were we were hoping that it would have and Yeah. I, I, I am excited. Like I feel like the community has grown. And it has become something substantial, you know. Yeah. Like, I think, like you know, episode ten, we were like, "Oh yeah, this is this is good." I mean, we're getting some some views, some traction. But then, like, I feel like episode twenty rolled around, and it really felt like we started to pick up a lot of traction. And I don't know, it's it's definitely started to snowball. And I'm right. excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh man, and I wish we had the Seth Fowler interview on camera, but that was great. Oh, with his shoes, man. Oh, man, he might be too much of a star now for us to, you know, he's got ads up in how, Soho. He's got multiple commercials. Yeah. Wait, how many uh, subscribers does he have on YouTube? 300? Oh, let's let's take a let's take a quick peek. I watch I watch at least, you know, one of his videos a night. 316,000 subscribers. He's going to hit a half a million soon. That is what we call hustle. <laughs> like major props to Seth Fowler. But anyway, um yeah those are man so many good episodes yeah Uh, i'm excited for some great new episodes coming out too yeah um do we have any like favorite design events from the year like think about pat like this past year like just generally doesn't have to be the the podcast i mean i got to i got to do a workshop for the first time at the square one conference and i i have to thank the square one crew uh the ads crew and hector for for uh you know bringing me out and and doing that that was so much fun i had no i had no idea what to expect but that was such a fun event square one is definitely a highlight for me especially for the in terms of design like it's it's just so cool because every day you get on instagram and you interact with other designers online and square one is that one time of the year where you get to actually interact with them in person. Yeah. And so that's always a joy. Yeah. And what about you, Nick? My favorite my favorite design from this design event from this year? I mean yeah. I think we gotta mention Dita Rams. Right. I mean that's hands down like an amazing moment. But besides that, I, I also wanna thank you, James, because you've really helped me in New York. I don't know. It's like you've you've just been like a great a uh, friend and collaborator and you know have introduced me to people that that I've been able to work with and so I don't know not to get emotional oh my gosh <laughs> I'm gonna cry oh my gosh well I mean 
Nick, if it weren't for you asking the simple question of, hey, James, do you want to do a podcast together? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't be sitting here yeah. 37 episodes in, <laughs> you know, and that's like I it was always something that I was really interested in doing. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm I'm honored to have uh, such an inspiring friend as well. I mean, like we are we're contemporaries, but but also I find a lot of inspiration in your work and and your drive and ambition. Thanks, James. So I found myself drawing more loops because of- <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's been a it's been a crazy year for sure. A lot of things have happened. Yeah, but uh, it's hard to really sum it up all in one. What are we What are we excited for, Nick? What 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 do we have to look forward to next year in 2019? Oh man, that's always a good question, man. I, I am. I mean, first of all, podcast is going to be awesome, right? Going to be trying to do those voicemails. I don't know. Try to incorporate you guys more into the podcast. Have right. more interviews. Um, so that I'm excited for the podcast in 2019. And then, I guess my personal work. I I think, you know, this year has been a lot of, like, just getting into New York and just going at everything. Like, just right. trying, like, just, like, everything all at once. And so I think, for me, personally, 2018 will be a year of, like, kind of stepping back, like, just a half step and being being more directed at what projects I take on and what I do with my time. Right. And so, yeah, I'll be, I'm kind of excited to be more focused, um... You know, I'm going to try to focus more on Almost Object, which mm-hmm. I'm sure I've mentioned since the beginning of the podcast. Yep. And <laughs> has, has, nothing has come out of that, but patience because I am excited because I am working on products for that. So Sweet. Yeah. I know. What do you, what do you got? What do you got going for on next oh, year? Oh, I, yeah. I'm excited to continue the podcast and, and keep refining and, and, uh, I would say likewise to to the comments that you said about work is is just um yeah taking a step back I've taken on a lot this year and uh I've learned a lot about myself and uh, as a designer and um and it's like raised my confidence in a lot of ways and also made me realize where I need to improve um so that's exciting like it's exciting to to find out like okay these are these are some things that I can work on, um, and uh, yeah, I, I, you know, we'll see we'll see what 2019 brings for I draw on receipts. Who knows? Yeah, are you gonna start drawing on paper bags or something? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I already have. I Nick. draw on napkins. I don't know. Yeah, start a start a side account. I'll start all of the I draw on <laughs> accounts. Oh man. Um, yeah, and you guys sent us sent us what you were looking forward to as well. You know, we wanted to get the voicemails in this episode, but we didn't have enough time, and that's okay. Um, you know, send your voicemails in for next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, that number is 646-494-4011. We needed a jingle for it. Yeah. 646-494-4011. All right, Mikey, take that sound clip. <laughs> um. Um, yeah <laughs> so yeah so yeah this is this has been a our little season one finale 2018 finale christmas special um and well you know we're gonna take a break we'll be back in january um i don't know what a, what a clean up things we gotta do i don't know uh i mean theme song by kiyoshi the kid right like and subscribe on youtube youtube uh follow what what is the nomenclature for for spotify follow yeah follow follow on spotify uh Uh, subscribe i haven't checked our spotify apple podcast on apple apple podcast (laughs) on the podcast (laughs) um and follow follow the instagram too wine what is this um (laughs) what did you say uh follow the instagram yes at minor details pod because yeah. I, I, I do kind of want to build that up to be a little bit more substantial. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll switch it up, start posting different things. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. And um, you guys are awesome. We appreciate you. This was an amazing first year and first season. And, yeah, 
Cheers. Cheers to you guys. Cheers to you. As al- as always, I'm at Nick P. Baker. And I'm at I Draw on Receipts. Peace out. Later.